Hello, welcome to SQL Server Analysis Services 120, Storage Modes. In this video I'll talk about the ways you can physically store your data and you'll see that there are actually three different ways of doing it for cubes, partitions in particular, and then there are a couple of ways of doing it for your dimensions. So first of all, what are storage modes? They are the physical storage for your data in both the cubes and dimensions, and this includes aggregations as I'll discuss in a moment. Now regardless of how you physically store it, it looks the same to a client application. They still issue an MDX query, analysis services processes that, brings the data back in a cell set, and then you have the data in a form that the client expects. Now there are actually three different storage modes as I mentioned before, and they are MOLAP, ROLAP, and HOLAP. MOLAP stands for multidimensional OLAP, so just MOLAP for short. And this is the default mode for pretty much everything you do in analysis services. I, I guess it is for everything in analysis services. And what it does is it stores the aggregations and all of the data from your relational data warehouse in a new set of binary files. So they're completely separate from the relational warehouse. So Here's what's important to understand about this. You're taking a copy of all the data in your dimension tables and all the data in your fact tables, assuming you're not filtering out anything with queries. You're taking a copy of all that data and storing it somewhere else in a new format. So what's important to understand about MOLAP is that I'm, I'm getting a copy of my data storing it elsewhere. So my total disk storage does go up, but more importantly it's a snapshot in time. In other words, if I then make a change to the data in my relational data warehouse, my star or snowflake schema, I have my, my cube is now out of date. I have no idea in my analysis services cube that the data back in the warehouse has changed. So that's a very important point to keep in mind, but We'll, I'll also discuss a little bit later why MOLAP is actually most often the, what you use. Now ROLAP is kind of the opposite approach. It stores aggregations in indexed views in the relational database. So it actually goes back and builds these new indexed views and stores those in the database. In addition, it leaves the dimension data and your fact data where they are in the dimension and fact tables. So it does not move those out in any way. Now as you can imagine, that's great. I don't really have any additional storage other than what's required to create and store those indexed views. So my total disk space is generally negligibly larger than what it was with just the relational data warehouse. Now the third option here is called HOLAP or hybrid OLAP. It just combines the two. It leaves the dimension and fact data in the relational database, okay, in the fact and dimension tables. But then it creates the aggregations in the new binary structure of MOLAP. The whole point of the MOLAP structure is that it is physically laid out on disk so that it can be accessed as quickly as possible. It can be read from disk and loaded into memory as quickly as possible. In no way am I saying that doing a SQL query against a SQL Server warehouse is slow. It's generally not, but compared to what you can get with the MOLAP structure, it does seem to be slow. So let's take a look at uh, the different storage modes. And for cubes and dimensions, it's a little bit different. For a dimension, there are only two options. There's MOLAP and ROLAP. In other words, I can copy my data out of the dimension and store it in this new binary file out on the hard drive in the MOLAP structure, or I can just leave it where it is in the dimension table and use the ROLAP storage mode. Now with a cube, what you're actually storing, uh, well, you're storing the base data and aggregations, but you're doing it at the partition level. So if you have a measure group, okay, based on a single fact table, that can be partitioned into separate physical files. And you have three options here, the MOLAP, the ROLAP, and the HOLAP. If I choose MOLAP, I'll get a copy of the fact data and store it in this new physical format, and I'll create aggregations in this new binary format. If I choose ROLAP, 
my base data stays where it is, and my aggregations are then built back in the relational database's indexed views. If I choose HOLAP, my fact data stays where it is, but the aggregations are built in this new binary structure. So why these three modes? What's the point in, in doing these? Well, MOLAP is almost always the fastest way to go. It is designed for extremely high performance of getting data, and it is it builds these aggregations as physically stored, not just indexed views that have to be calculated on the fly. Now, the downside of this is I am going to use more total disk storage, but here's something that's important to understand with MOLAP. MOLAP is highly compressed. So, the rule of thumb is that your MOLAP structure will be 30 to 40 percent the size of your relational data warehouse, and that's even when you add some aggregations to it. Now, obviously, that number can vary widely, but just the quick rule of thumb is if I have, let's say, one terabyte of data in my relational data warehouse, that will equate to a cube of I'll just throw out 350 gig. So again, somewhere between 30 and 40 percent on average. So I am using more total disk storage because I'm making a copy of the data, but I'm not using uh, anywhere near the size of that relational data warehouse. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm compressing it quite a bit, as you can see, by, by over half uh, on average. The other thing about MOLAP to remember is that the cubes are a snapshot in time. In other words, once I process a cube, once I go and get that base data and make the copy of it into this MOLAP structure, I'm done. All my queries are now answered from this new MOLAP structure. Nothing goes back to the relational database, not even drill through queries. Okay, they did in 2000, but in 2005 and 2008, they stay in that MOLAP structure. So if my data changes back in my star schema, the cube doesn't change. You have to reprocess it to get that new data into it. So that's where ROLAP comes in. ROLAP, again, compared to MOLAP, is slow. And it is, is slow just because of the way SQL works versus the way MOLAP cubes work. But the benefit of ROLAP is that it does support real time. In other words, if a new fact record comes into the database, then the next query will pick up on that fact record. I don't have to reprocess anything in a sense. So ROLAP does support this ability to do what's called real time OLAP. Now, a lot of customers I talk to start off with, oh, we need true real time. We need true real time. And then when you start explaining to them the drawbacks of doing this, they usually come back with, uh, well, we can live with a 10 minute lag, that's fine. And when that becomes the case, there is another strategy for addressing these that I'll talk about in a, in a moment and then actually show in a future video. So ROLAP has the advantage, of course, of being real time, the disadvantage of being slower. and the index views that it uses for aggregations, again, they're not physically storing any of the data. So uh, aggregations have to be calculated uh, at query time, which, which is part of the reason for the slower performance. And there are some other caveats as well, but let's just leave it at that for now. The third option, HOLAP, if a user is at a higher level of, of data, if they're looking at aggregations, it's the same speed as MOLAP because it is MOLAP. The aggregations are stored in a MOLAP structure. But when the user goes down to the leaf level, the data at the lowest level of fact granularity, they're back at the ROLAP structure. So it's back to the ROLAP speed. Now, there is a feature in 2005 and 2008 called proactive caching. This gives you some sort of real-time behavior in MOLAP. Now, I say sort of because it's not exactly real-time behavior, but it simulates it in some way. Basically, what happens is you can set it up to monitor some of the tables in the relational data warehouse. And when those change, it can go and get that data. But rather than reprocess the cube, it processes an in-memory cache. So if a new fact record comes in, it puts it in the cache. And then when the query happens, 
it gets the data from the cube and then adds what's in the cache to it and you get uh, an answer. Now, having said that, there will be a whole video on this later because there are obviously some caveats to this as well. But for, uh, for some purposes, it, it can work very well. Now, with these different storage modes, uh, how do you go in and actually choose these? Well, it depends on if whether it's a dimension or a partition in a cube. Of course, uh, I mentioned before, dimensions can only have two choices, rolap or molap. And then the partitions actually have a sliding scale, which gets sort of into that proactive caching that I mentioned before. But I will go in and show you how to do this right now. Here you can see the simple sales database in, uh, opened up in BI Dev Studio. And I have one of the dimensions loaded. It really doesn't matter which dimension I choose here because all of the dimensions have a property called storage mode. And you can see it here. And of course, the default is MOLAP. I can set this to ROLAP. This is actually interesting because it means that you could have some of the dimensions in your cube stored one way and, and uh, other dimensions stored the other way. I normally, again, wouldn't recommend that but it does show that they can be stored differently. And your dimensions could be stored in, let's say, MOLAP mode, and your cube, the partitions in it, could be stored in ROLAP. Now, in the past, back with Analysis Services 2000, large dimensions did not perform well in MOLAP, and so they recommended ROLAP for very large dimensions. That really isn't a problem with 2005 and 2008 anymore. So uh, again, most of the time, you're going to have ROLAP for this. Now, with the cube, you have the partitions tab. And I know it's uh, they're squashed somewhat, but the partitions tab. Now, this is 2008. If you're in 2005, uh, this, this looks a little bit different, but uh, it's close enough that you'll see this. There is, uh, for each partition, uh, if you had multiple partitions like up here, you, you could set these individually, but for any partition, you can click on storage settings and you get this sliding scale from MOLAP on the right hand side and then dropping back, it goes to scheduled MOLAP, automatic, medium latency, low latency, and then you go to whole app and finally roll app. Now, again, this gets into some of the proactive caching pieces, but uh, you can see right now I'm on MOLAP and I could change this to either whole app in this case or real-time roll app. And that's really all I have to do, uh, except again, we'll talk about the proactive caching piece later. You see the warning at the bottom for this. But basically, that is where the storage for this comes in. Now, I've mentioned before, okay, great, we can have basically roll app, which is the slowest, but it supports real-time, and we can have MOLAP, which performs the best, but it's not real time. And then there's whole app, which is kind of in the middle. So, you know, what are the recommendations and where do they fit in for these different pieces? Well, the recommendations are to use MOLAP most of the time. That actually meets most companies' needs. Now, if the MOLAP structure is going to be very large, then you'll want to partition your data. We'll talk about partitioning again in a, another video later. Use ROLAP when you really need real-time OLAP. And again, most companies start off saying, oh yes, we need real-time, but in reality, they find out they don't. They can live with some kind of time lag. There are a, a number of negative performance implications from using ROLAP. It just does not perform anything like a MOLAP structure. And notice that uh, I've never recommended whole app in the past. Um, I, I'm, I, I can't say that I would never use it. I don't see where I would ever use it yet. And uh, re recently I had someone contact me and say that they were going to be using whole app and wanted some more information about it. And I said, well, why do you want to use whole app? And they said, well, we read that MOLAP can only support up to 50 gigs. No, that's not true. Uh, I have worked with databases, uh, analysis services cubes that are approaching 800 gig in size. Now, that's not a single partition, 
they were partitioned, but clearly MOLAP could handle that with no problem. So uh, in the vast majority of cases, clearly I would recommend MOLAP. In fact, I've been doing this now for about 11 years, you know, approaching 12 years, and I've seen 40 to 50 companies worldwide doing BI on the Microsoft platform. In that time, and with those customers, I've had exactly one customer use Rollapp, and that was for a very special purpose, and everyone else has used Molap. So that's just, uh, from my experience, that's not to say you won't need Rollapp. It's not to say you might not find a great reason to use Holap. That just comes from experience uh, across a wide range of companies in multiple countries and, and across all kinds of industries. So with that, I'll just summarize by saying Molap is appropriate. In most cases, it's faster. And there are some benefits you can achieve with this proactive caching coming up in a later video that uh, lets you do some sort of real-time stuff with Molap. If you truly need roll, if you truly need real time, then Rollapp is there for you, uh, and it does work. And then Holap, of course, is the combination of the two approaches. I don't recommend it, uh, but th th it's there. And now you hopefully can understand the structure, the physical structure of the two different physical formats, Molap and Rollapp, and then how Holap combines those two. Thank you.